What's up? Uh, I got this new camera, so I figured I'd do a video on the Civic. Uh, 1981 Honda Civic Wagon. Automatic. Um, got this, what, February, I think? Um, from a girl who was using it as her daily driver, and then a jet clogged in the carburetor or something, and it just stopped running. Needed a lot more than that, but that's why it got taken off the road. Um, let's see here. It's the factory silver color with the red interior. This is pretty much the most common color that I've seen for these wagons. Um, it's pretty much all stock. Uh, the only thing I did was I got rid of all the um, the three barrel K hand carb that comes stock on these things is just an absolute nightmare. Uh, I tried my best to leave it on there. Uh, pulled it all apart and cleaned it and I actually got the engine to run pretty well and then it had some weird issue again and I actually after that I rebuilt the carb and after that I just it it for some reason it just would not um, keep a consistent idle. Or no, well, I wouldn't keep a consistent idle. It would just rev to the moon, even with the, you know, the throttle linkage closed. So I took it about, took it apart like four or five times, and I could just never figure it out. So this is my Weber swap. It's the standard DGEV 3236. Um, a lot of people say that you can't use these carbs on these engines. It's an EM1 engine. Um, they don't, they run like crap or whatever. Uh, that is 100% not the case at all. Um, first of all, there's the on the three barrel carbs. There's a little pre-combustion chamber. Well, not in the carb itself, but in the the each cylinder. There's a little pre-combustion chamber, and there's the little small barrel on the carburetor that feeds that. And uh, the intake adapter for these Webers has uh, provisions for that. That actually it sends you know air and fuel into that, and it works fine. The other thing is I think a lot of people don't realize how small of a uh, primary idle jet you have to run in these carburetors to get them to work on these engines. I think I had to get a 40 or a 45. It was tiny. And uh, if you look around, you know, like Redline's website and all the other places, you, nobody stocks anything smaller than a 50 generally. I was able to find one from some... Um, Volkswagen parts place that stocked really really small jets and uh, now it runs great what did I do haven't done much I could probably use some love uh, I replaced the water pump and it's actually the third alternator that I've had in it and that one failed and I uh... oh wait no that's only is that the second one yeah it's the second one but I had it, it failed probably within I don't know a hundred miles of me putting it on there uh, two of the wires that go from the stator to the um, rectifier had broken. It was a remanufactured one. They just did a bad job, I think. Um, it is an Iowa car, so you can see there's a lot of rust. Most of it's surface, but some of it is poking through. Um, this is probably the worst of it on the entire car. Is right here. So I gotta fix that, but other than that, it's really not horrible for this part of the country at all. Um, wheels were pretty were rough, so I painted them. Um, new tires, obviously. Uh, uh, those beauty rings are actually off of a Buick Opal that I found at a junkyard. Um, if you don't know what that is, and it sounds like it's not a real car, it's a T-platform car, just like a Chevette. It's actually just a rebadged Isuzu Gemini uh, for the U.S. market with probably the most confusing name ever. Uh, I think they only made them for like two years, but anyway, I'd love to have that car, but it was totally trashed out. <sighs> what else? Did all the tune-up stuff, all the usual things. Um, might do a video on this Weber conversion. I kind of did it my own way. There's a lot of... Uh, information online and various things you can do, but I mean, there's always more than one way to do something. Uh, all the brake stuff, well, master cylinder and the brake booster are original to this car. Um, what else? Had to replace the battery, which was kind of an emergency situation, so it's just a crappy Walmart one. 
I'm pretty sure the starter's been replaced at some point. I replaced one of the engine mount bushings and this CV shaft because uh, they were causing some issues. And the, the boot was ripped on the shaft. It actually sounded fine still, but I figured it would be better to just replace it. Let's see, it's got all the original labels and everything. Including the ring that goes around the uh, uh, the catch can or whatever for the radiator. But yeah, I mean, under here, it's actually really solid. All the places where it counts. Down there, it's all rock solid where the control arms mount. Uh, the cross member here, there's no rust on that. So yeah. Um, all the glass is good on this car. There is some roof stuff starting. Uh, these cars will have like a plastic insert that goes in here, which... Uh, Looks nice, but it also just traps moisture like crazy. So actually on this side of the car, there's some rust and there's actually a couple holes. So I don't really ever bring this thing outside if it's wet out, just because I don't want the headliner getting wrecked. Uh, so that's all going to get fixed. It had the, I don't know if it's factory or not, but it had like that uh, thin like dual pinstripe going down the side. And uh, I bought this uh, vintage, um, I can't remember what it was called, but anyway, it's this like pinstripe tape that's actually three different colors of vinyl. And replaced, well I just put it over the pinstriping because I thought it looked cooler. Uh, all up in here is actually really nice. There's no holes in the wheel wells or anything. Uh, pretty much all the holes on this car are external and then on the inside of the quarters it's kind of blown out. Uh, this door handle's busted, but I mean it still works. Uh, I, I, this is busted. What else? I don't know why I'm making this video. I just wanted to try the new camera out. Uh, I love that these have a wagon badge. I think that's awesome. Um, and then the old kind of Honda Civic logo from like the first generation ones. This is a second generation, 1981. Uh, First gen was from the beginning up to 79 was the last year, and then 80 to 83 is the second gen. Um, so this is the second generation Civic. These don't get a whole lot of love. There's really not a ton of support for these things. First gens all day, you know, the EFs all day. I feel like the third and fourth gens are kind of neglected, or second and third, I should say. Um, I bought it in Council Bluffs, and my friend had this uh, Council Bluffs Honda dealer uh, plate frame that I gave him and then I realized he still had it hanging on the wall in his garage so I asked if he wanted to let it go uh, so I got it back for this car. Um, I found this on eBay, it's a reproduction but that was just too perfect. Uh, this thing was just pretty much used as a daily driver, it wasn't really um, you get this thing to focus. Is it like an autofocus or something? There we go. Um, so yeah, you can see that the carpet has had some stuff set on it and everything. Um, somebody had repainted all of the plastic back here. You can see it's all like the right-ish color now. Somebody had painted it all black really horribly, so I did an equally horrible job painting it, you know, close to the original color. Um, that's, the carpet's kind of peeling a little bit there, I gotta fix that. The seat's got this. Um, the rear seat actually has multiple positions, so you can actually, I think there's like three positions for reclining it on these cars. So there's all the way back, kind of intermediate, and then like, basically 90 degree angle and of course you can lay it completely flat for like a huge cargo area in the back which is really nice I and mean, that's common on like most wagons but the reclining seat I thought was kind of unique um, 
The interior was a pretty big selling point in this car. I really pretty much only buy stuff if it's got a decent interior on it, so it's happy to see that. Um, it's not perfect, obviously. The back seat's got that tear and all this stuff I had to repaint. Okay. And then this seat and the driver's seat both have issues, but I mean, overall, everything's there and it's really like pretty good, so. The headliner's like perfect in this car. Dash is pretty good. I don't think there's any cracks or anything. Everything sat out in the sun forever, so there's a lot of discoloration and you know everything faded to a different color, so. Um, and it is a non-AC car, so it doesn't have air conditioning, obviously. That's what that means. Um, fresh air vents on the side here, and then of course it's got the usual heater controls. It had some disgusting JVC CD player or whatever in it, so I put a slightly less disgusting uh, two-post style Bluetooth stereo in it to replace that. I have a Honda OEM, like AM FM radio, out of a second gen Accord, uh, but it doesn't quite fit in here, so I'm still looking for a, the right radio for this thing. Uh, yeah, that plastic around the shifter was another victim of the like horrible black spray paint that they did um, I took the carpet all out you probably can't even tell that I cleaned it but it was much worse than that but you can still get the hatchback carpet um, I don't know if the carpet's the same between the hatchback and the wagon I'm assuming it's not but uh, it would be interesting to see if I could get new carpet for this thing another rough spot that I gotta fix it's mostly solid but just like that area right there is pretty blown out um, there's rust holes just right there and then same spot on the other side but that's it the whole rest of the floor and firewall on this car is just 100% rust free um, and again you know that may not be great but for Iowa that's insane for a 40 year old Japanese car um, Everything works. I don't think there's anything left that doesn't work in this car. The headlight uh, switch, the housing itself is cracked, so that's a little flaky. But other than that, I've gotten everything working. Um, the key switch was having an issue where it was losing contact in like the ignition on position. And I took it completely apart. I replaced the, the uh, ignition, like the actual lock cylinder went through the switch and everything and I thought I got it perfect and then I you know used it for a few days and it just went back to not working so these cars for the UK and probably other markets have a choke lever right here um, so there was just like a delete plug uh, so I put a toggle switch that gives it power to the coil and that way it never you know dies while you're riding driving I should say so typically started I just Give it a couple pumps. I don't know if the bearings are bad in the alternator or something, but it kind of has some weird uh, voltage issues. And you can, if I put a stethoscope on the alternator, it's making noise that corresponds with it. So I kind of wonder if the bearings are just kind of going out. I just need to get a good alternator for this car. But at least I got it so it charges fine again. Yeah, you can kind of see pulses you can I don't know if you can hear the noise of it just wow 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 but uh it's pretty annoying at night I've had people flash their brights at me because they think I'm just like doing this a bunch but yeah it's a really nice driving car really comfortable uh, it feels I tell people it feels pretty much identical to any like 90s Japanese economy car you drive which is nice so 
pretty good. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it runs great with that Weber on there. Uh, if anybody's interested in my whole conversion stuff, I might put a video up of it because there's a lot of misinformation out there and bad. There's good info, you know, there's good videos out there of people that actually know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of misinformation on forums and stuff and people I've talked to that have these cars or even the first gens that say you can't do Weber swap them, it'll never run right again. And that is totally not true at all. There's, you just have to know how to tune a carburetor. Uh, so anyway, there it is.